Hello, my name is Barbara Njau. I am the Senior Reporter and Markets Editor for Foreign Direct Investment Magazine. And today at the IMF Summit, I am joined by the Deputy Prime Minister and the Finance Minister of New Zealand, Mr. Bill English. Thank you very much for joining me today. Thank you. Uh, so I'll be interested first in knowing, how would you characterise the current state of New Zealand's economy? And one of the things I'd be really interested in knowing is uh, you guys are actually the first Asia-Pacific country to have successfully negotiated a free trade agreement with China. So could you tell me, could you contextualise that a bit more and tell me about the outcome uh, with regards to that as well? well New the New Zealand economy is in pretty good shape. We're, uh, we didn't have a banking crisis. Our government's books are, will be back in surplus next year with relatively low uh, government debt and we'll be growing at around two and a half to three, maybe three and a half percent. One of the reasons we've been able to come through the recession reasonably well is because of the Chinese Free Trade Agreement. Uh, it's now been in place for three years. We also have recently concluded agreements with Hong Kong uh, and Taiwan. So we now have, we're on the way to tariff-free access uh, to these fast-growing uh, and of course in China's case very large markets. Our main uh, export to those markets are food uh, of various sorts, principally dairy but also a range of other products. Uh, and we've had, had the benefit of strong prices uh, and that's cushioned the effect of recession in New Zealand and uh, underpinning the um, better growth that we're now enjoying. Okay, and so although New Zealand's economy is highly differentiated to those of its neighbours, particularly um, Australia, uh, it's seen to a lesser extent and also historically as very, its performance is seen as quite tied to what happens in the Australian economy. So given the slowdown in demand, especially for China, for, for Chinese resources from Australia, how worried are you about the knock-on effect of Australia's slowing growth on your economy and what are some of your unique selling points that you feel will help you weather the recession? Yeah, we are pretty closely connected to the Australian economy, uh, but with respect to Chinese growth, it's a, a, a slightly more complex story. So, uh, we are exporters of protein to the Chinese market. We are uh, exposed to the Chinese consumer cycle. Now, over time, uh, as the Chinese economy rebalances, uh, we think there's a pretty positive picture for consumption becoming a greater part of the Chinese economy and of course large numbers of people still continuing to grow their incomes. Uh, Australia is tied to the Chinese investment cycle and that looks to be a bit more volatile, uh, although, <coughs> although still plenty of demand. So we would expect that Australia uh, won't grow at the rate that it has been. Uh, but still Chinese demand will still be underpinning what is now a quite large resource industry in Australia. So we're not too concerned. Um, of course we want to see China work through its credit issues and its rebalancing issues successfully uh, and that will be quite a big challenge. In the meantime we have worked on becoming a more resilient economy so that uh, whatever uh, waves are generated from China or Australia we're in better shape, that we're more competitive uh, to be able to handle them. Um, so New Zealand this year is predicted to grow by 2.5%. Uh, do you think you guys are on track to maintain this growth uh, average? And also, are there any new developments in the, uh, that are in the pipeline right now that you think are really interesting to comment on? I think we are on track for that sort of growth, probably a bit better. Uh, we've got um, export prices holding up plus some pretty strong sources of domestic demand growth. Uh, we're rebuilding uh, Christchurch after an earthquake. Uh, the total cost of that rebuild is around 40 billion New Zealand dollars, so around 35 billion US dollar rebuild, so it's quite large. Uh, in terms of um, new sources of growth on the horizon, uh, this year we've got <coughs> quite a significant program of oil and gas exploration. Uh, going on. New Zealand has a very large offshore zone. Uh, there's around about two billion of exploration commitments have been made um, over the, you know, going out over the next four or five years. Uh, and we would we hope that there's um, going to be some positive results out of that. Uh, we've also got on the horizon now some quite large uh, in infrastructure investments. Um, a big program going now, but uh, particularly in Auckland with significant population growth, some quite large projects, you know, on the horizon five to seven years out. 
Okay. And so uh, FDR Markets, which is a database that's affiliated with uh, Foreign Direct Investment Magazine, uh, actually found that the number of greenfield projects going into New Zealand have been very resilient. So um, what has been dri driving this avid foreign investor interest, particularly when you look at greenfield as opposed to brownfield or even other types of investments, for example, M&A? And also, what are some of the sectors you think will be interesting to look out for? Because you've mentioned some of the traditional uh, high performers, but are there some interesting new sectors or even interesting new trends to look out for uh, in mm -hmm. coming years? Well, because New Zealand's a small market, investors need to be pretty committed to having a close look. Uh, we don't have uh, the largest scale, say even of Australia, uh, or we don't, we, and we don't have pipeline of similar type investments. Um, they tend to be one-off opportunities. So the, uh, the areas I think of interest are certainly further um, interest in the oil and gas uh, exploration, uh, food, uh, what, what we describe as food processing. So we are very effective producers of uh, protein. Um, we, <coughs> we add a lot of value one way or another to that, but there's plenty of scope for more uh, added value there and also in um, a fairly substantial forestry industry as well, uh, where uh, the prices for the raw materials have been pretty good, but in the long run, um, you know, we'd be looking for investment there. Uh, New Zealand has a, a quite diversified and specialised uh, manufacturing and IT uh, range of businesses. So you'll find um, relatively small businesses who may dominate a global niche, for instance, um, or have the capacity to grow quite rapidly. Uh, and uh, you know, if investors spend a bit of time looking through the undergrowth, uh, they'll um, they'll find some real gems. Uh, being based uh, at Washington for the IMF and World Bank Summit uh, this year, I think it's one of the ominous threats is, uh, particularly with regards to emerging markets, is the expected tapering uh, of the US Federal Reserve's bond buying program. So uh, are you concerned about this? Are you concerned about the knock-on effect? Because particularly when you look at uh, neighboring markets like Indonesia, India, mm -hmm. uh, who have, seen, who have uh, witnessed a lot of capital outflows, are you worried about maybe uh, this kind of the contagious effect this might have on uh, New Zealand? Look, it's been our expectation at some time uh, that at some time uh, the Fed would have to taper and start shrinking its balance sheet. Uh, it would be pretty dangerous actually for everyone to assume that uh, the, the best way to deal with the economy is just to keep printing money uh, because anything else feels uncomfortable. So it's another, another reason why we focus a fair bit on resilience uh, of our economy. With respect to the emerging markets, uh, some of the information here uh, and other commentary that I've picked up indicates that these markets are a bit more resilient than perhaps than they were, say, in the late 90s when there was another, uh, you know, a, a crisis in those markets which did affect New Zealand directly. We had a short, sharp recession as a result of it, so we know what it looks like. Uh, so we're a bit more positive about it. Um, that uh, everyone knows these events have to occur, they're not, they're not unexpected, uh, and that they have in the last 10 years improved their position significantly around um, uh, their, their financial, uh, uh, financial setup and the strength of their balance sheets and so on.